season two of Battlestar Galactica. I've, I'm about halfway through at the moment. I got to be honest. I'm a little bit um, the the storyline with the Cylons and you know, and the whole idea behind uh, the humans falling in love with certain Cylons and that being the main precursor as to why um, humanity is still you know surviving after maybe the destruction of Earth and all this sort of stuff. I'm getting a little bit tired of it. I have to be honest. I'm getting a little bit tired of this weird trope of like humans falling in love with machines. I guess there's there is some there is some credence to it when you look at how people are with their phones and with their laptops. You know, I, I know how I am with my stuff and how people are in general with their tech. Um, people that stream and stuff, you know, on a daily daily on a daily basis, right? Um, the people that they speak to online. Uh, when that virtual space are probably more real to them than anybody they kind of speak to day to day because you're spending what that is at least eight hours per day talking to these people right it's a lot of time um that you're investing in it um there's a lot of emotions tied into it late at night intoxicated high whatever it may be but i think this idea that in the future we're going to have you know live in a world where humans will be corrupted by um forces unbeknownst to them that live within or that dwell within these um ais or robots and stuff it's a little bit weird especially um when it comes to a romantic thing right when it's a thing of like oh this person is going to maybe forego his family or forego loyalty to his country or to his fellow troops in order to you know um in order to what uh, impregnate a robot and raise their half man half robot baby it's just a bit baffling to me in that regard um the series is a bit strange it goes on a bit of a tangent in that way but i guess it's one of those early 2000 tropes where you know they always have to kind of imbue a lot of like romantic drama um into these sort of series to make them compelling i guess for a wider audience i'm sure after the first season when all the ratings hit they went to then reach more people so they just sprinkled in some love storylines but i'm getting a little bit bored of that whole thing maybe it's a common thing in sci-fi which i'm not really familiar with but i don't know um usually it's always about space politics um there is some love involved but this is kind of getting a bit over the top with the whole falling in love with robots thing but still despite that it's still a solid solid series easily you know way better than anything i've seen on netflix recently especially when you think of stuff like star trek discovery with you know like that's one of the most infuriating tv series i've ever watched in a while i was glad as well that i finally decided to kind of double check on youtube and click some reviews and see what other people are saying because i thought i was the only one i thought it was only me that kind of felt as if like this is a bit this is getting a little bit ridiculous why is this michael burnham character always um the center of any everything like why does everything seem to revolve around this one character why is she incapable of making mistakes or um facing the consequences of her errors um why does everything seem to kind of bend and coerce to her will like it just seemed a little bit bizarre that, as a, of a storyline to kind of really get invested in and then finally i found people on youtube who kind of had the same sort of thing and it kind of led me down this ra rabbit hole with the fandom menace and all these other um real um invested geeks who are like really annoyed that disney has basically turned some of their beloved franchises and whatever it may be into basically vessels for modern day politics right to kind of further an agenda wherever it may be and it's disappointing to see because i guess a lot of those things from what i've seen so far the source material there's a lot of really cool interesting politics um and kind of societal views in there that could be co-opted and maybe you know uh, reinterpreted in a modern light easily without having to force down without having to really kind of shoehorn in loads of racial and um, identity politics sort of nonsense right you can do it there's a lot in there especially when you think of you know the amount of aliens and stuff that exists in those kind of universes and people from different nationalities and different planets whatever it may be right just from all over the universe there is ways that you can kind of make that more interesting without making it super super obvious and i guess with this michael burnham character they try to go overboard and essentially they made a character who's basically impervious to any sort of mistake or errors and basically goes through the entire series of star trek discovery just doing whatever the fuck she wants right at any time and it kind of never upsets it, it kind of so it upsets the storyline but then it always sort of works out for that main character. It's a really strange one um, to kind of get wrap my head around. And it's annoying too, because there's a lot of really good, you know, I watch it for a lot of the escapism in terms of seeing, you know, computer, you know, um, the CGI spaceships and stuff and fights and what they're not. There's something just quite cool about that, right? Just being a bit of a geek in that regard and loving um, anything to do with space and, 
you know, um, uh, spaceships and all that sort of nonsense and, you know, being obsessed with stuff that Lee Lomond is doing with uh, SpaceX, whatever it may be. It's nice to see it, but when you actually get down to the actual story line itself and how it's written, like, you know, the, 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 the chasm between Battlestar Galactica and Star Trek Discovery is just insane, right? Insane, really, really insane. Like expert writing on, and again, Battlestar Galactica isn't like amazing, amazing, but it's still super, super ahead of anything that I've seen recently in any of those kind of main digital streaming platforms. So you know, it is what it is, I guess. But I could definitely understand why a lot of those guys within that fandom menace are annoyed, especially if you imagine I'm just I've just picked up on this, and you know, the last few years. Imagine if this was your entire life, and you've been obsessed with everything to do with Lucasfilm and star wars and star trek and whatever it may be from when you're an infant and then you've slowly you slowly you slowly seen your the thing that you loved you know die a slow but sure death in the hands of people who quite clearly are using it for their own political um you know and career gains and not using it in terms of maybe furthering the story adding to the legacy bloody blah, blah coming from it from fans they're just seeing it as another way to grift and um essentially that's what it turned into and it's turned into one big grift machine and people are out here you know driving these representation represent representation drives or whatever nonsense it is it's just it's just bizarre to me and it's all make-believe really isn't it it's sci-fi it's fantasy none of this stuff is real to imbued um, representation politics and identity politics and it just doesn't make any sense personally um and even if it does and there is a question for it just make your own thing up in it i don't see the reason and the point of ruining legacy products just to fit in just to fit in your own you know narrative and shit just go and make your own thing like it's no big deal really anyone can do it um for the most part most of these pl streaming platforms are willing and ready to throw a checkbook at you you just have to make it compelling enough that normal people that don't give a fuck about the puzzles will watch it too that's the tricky part Right. Once you get money or check from Hulu or Netflix to make your woke drama, it's all well and good. You can make it, but you suddenly have to now find a way of appealing to the people who care about those kind of politics, and then the regular everyday folk who just want to watch something cool and interesting, which is a you know very difficult task um, to figure out. And so far, not a lot of people have basically figured it out. With if you believe the whole mantra of go work, go broke. But yeah, um, so far, Star Trek Galactica, or Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica Season 2 has been very, very impressive for me. 